My name is Jeremy Gallegos. Uh, this is printerbot.com doing some setup videos for you to help you get started with your new printer bot. So we're going to get started with um, setting up your extruder and getting proper feeding and extrusion of your filament. And we got two different types of extruders here. We got our direct drive setup on a simple here and we got our older extruder set up um, with a PrinterBot Plus. So we're going to be showing you both of these today and how to properly get them going uh, so you can have some happy printing. Uh, well, first we're going to start with um, getting the temperature right. And so we recommend that you use Repetier or Repetier, whatever you choose to pronounce it as. And so I got both of these printers hooked up to this computer right now. And you're going to go to your print panel if you're on a Mac. Uh, I know on the Windows uh, OS version of Repetier, uh, it's called Control Panel, I believe, but it's the far right tab in Repetier. I'm going to use Repetier. We'll move forward with that. So you scroll down in this panel and you go to your extruder and a dark light here means it's off a light blue light means that it's heat on and it's going to or it's going to heat up to whatever temperature you set in here i'm going to be using pla today um, so you can you're going to have to fine tune your own pa that you get pla that you get if you get it from us I recommend anywhere from 190 to 200 degrees Celsius. So on this one I'm going to heat it up to 195. And so when you do that, you got your blue, light blue light on there. It's going to start reaching that temperature 195. Down in the right hand corner of this window, I'm going to open it up a little bit more. It's telling me that it's going to bring it up to 195. It's at 194 right now currently. So we're pretty much there. And I would be okay with extruding probably anywhere above uh, 190. And then on my other printer, no, nope, I'm not going to close that out. I also did the same thing. Uh, I have my light blue button engaged, 195, because I'm also going to be doing PLA on the plus. And it's down here. You can see it's reached to 195 already, so we're good to go there. So you want to make sure that your hot end is to temperature before you try to extrude. Um, if you haven't reached temperature, um, you're not going to extrude properly. and You're going to jam up or you're going to potentially strip out your filament. So we don't try to do anything before our hot end is to temperature. So since both bots are ready to go, we will start with the direct drive system. And with ours, you got this filament guide. That's just a uh, pressure um, tab there that connects it all together. So I'm going to remove that so we can first look at, we want to make sure there's proper alignment with the drive gear, the serrated portion of the drive gear, which we, we call the hob, it's a hob cut. And we want to make sure that properly aligns with the uh, roller bearing that's in there. And if you can look at that, it's not exactly lining up correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and get an Allen wrench. And we use a 1 16th for that set screw that's in there. I'm going to go ahead and loosen it up. You can move that all around, as you can see, on that um, motor rod or shaft. And I'm going to make sure that it's on the flattened portion, that I'm tightening it and securing it to the flattened portion of that motor shaft. Tighten it pretty good. And now I'm in proper alignment there. So now the filament can feed properly with the tension of that roller bearing. So now I get my filament. Go get the cutters first. And we like to cut the filament at an angle so that it has a nice sharp angle to go through not only the extruder but into the hot end. So I'm going to just let it feed down there into the hot end. And there we go. And if you want to come down here to the hot end, you'll see out the tip, it looks like I was printing with clear previously. I have black filament now, but there's a reservoir in that tip that you have to clear out the previous filament that you have. If it's a brand new nozzle, 
you'll see the color of filament that you have, but if you printed with a different color, color previously, it will take a little while to clean that reservoir and get the new color to go through. So I'm just pressing right now with my finger, just making sure that it's moving through the hot end relatively easy, and it is. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. I'm going to recut it at an angle like I mentioned previously. And this time, I'm going to put it in and through the hot end. This time, I'm going to latch on the tensioner, the extruder tensioner. So I'm going to press down here because the spring gives it pressure. Bring it down. And if you can see from the top, you'll see that the filament is in proper alignment between the roller bearing and the gear. Okay. So now what I can do is go back to my repetier. And right here in the extruder portion of the print panel, extrude millimeter. So you decide how many millimeters that you want to just extrude. So I'm going to do 25 millimeters and I'm going to press extrude and it will start to extrude 25 millimeters of filament. Now it's going relatively slow so I'm going to change that setting once this is done so we can do it a little bit faster because this is going to take a while. But if you want to go back to the Repetier program, I'll show you where you can change that. Right here under speed, millimeters per minute, it's at 60 right now. I feel comfortable with 200. So I'm going to change that. Now I'm going to hit 25 again. You'll see how that speeds up the extrusion. Now it's coming out at 200 millimeters per minute. That's usually what we tested at. So there we go. That is all ready. So we hit temperature. We do temperature first. We look at the alignment. We want to make sure the alignment uh, is right and correct. And tension is also can be an element that you want to dial in, which with the direct drive system, you need a screwdriver and either an 8 millimeter wrench or a 5 16th will also do. So you would use your screwdriver here at the top. You got the spring functioning the tension and then you got a nylock nut down there. 632 nylock or locking nut, whatever you want to call it. And you tighten it to bring more tension to it or you loosen it to relieve some tension. Um, you can dial that in to find fine-tune it and you just want to make sure it's extruding um, at a smooth rate. Uh, if, if the gear seems to be kind of pulsating or um, clicking, like it's jamming, click, 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 you may have too much tension on here. You may need to back this off a little bit. Um, but that's what we have for the direct drive. So now we'll move to, uh, I guess one last thing is I didn't put this uh, filament guide back on, but you're going to want to do that when you actually start a print to make sure that it doesn't move off of that gear. So you would feed it through the guide, down through the hot end, and then you would go ahead and compress that in there. And that's going to guide your filament as you move forward with a beautiful print. Same concepts, just a different driving system. This one, your motor has a small gear that drives a larger gear. The larger gear is connected to a bolt that we call a hob bolt because it has a serrated portion, hobbed, serrated cut on the bolt, just like the other drive gear had. You want to make sure that that gear or the serrated portion of that bolt is in alignment with that cavity in the wooden extruder assembly, which it is. And there's a little bit of play there. You can, you can, I mean, you want to be it relatively right above the hot end, 
you don't want it to be too far left or too far right. You want it to be centered as much as possible. So when, if you're putting that together yourself, I don't know if you can see the shiny portion, but we did put a washer between that large gear and the, uh, the roller bearing there to space it properly. Um, you may f find that you don't need that. Um, wood can vary in thickness, this plywood, so that's why we provide you with an extra, uh, I believe it's a 5 16 or no, actually quarter inch washer um, for that purpose. But just like we want to um, align the, the direct drive extruder, we also want to align the roller bearing with the serrated portion of this bolt. So it's going to be a little hard to see, but you want to make sure that this lines up with that, por that serrated portion. And it does. So I can go ahead and take some filament now. This printer is also to temperature, meaning for PLA, um, I'm having it at about 195, so it's there. I will cut the filament at an angle. So it'll have a nice sharp point. So it'll go through the hot end. But when I first start off a, uh, a brand new printer, I like to just feed it through by hand first. So I'm doing that now. And if you come down, you'll be able to see that I'm pushing the filament down through the extruder. It's filling up. There's a brand new hot end, a brand new printer. So it's going to fill up that reservoir first. And then it's going to, once it's full, the reservoir in that tip will start to extrude the filament through the tip, that 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which it's doing it relatively easy. So we're good to go on that. So I'm going to pull it back out. I'm going to go ahead and cut at an angle. Nice sharp point. This time, with this extruder, I'm going to go through the two 3-inch 632 screws, and then I will feed it down through the hot end. Once I get into that hot end, I'm going to go ahead and latch this on. want to make sure that the filament is resting in that serrated portion of the hob bolt, and that the roller bearing is uh, applying pressure there so that when the large motor, the large extruder motor moves the small gear it will then in turn move the filament down through the hot end. So alignment is good. The next thing on this one we'd talk about is tension. You got these two 3 inch 632 screws with uh, two large extruder springs on them. I think it's like three quarter inch or something like that. And then you got your um, your two nylock nuts. So for this is 1.75 millimeter PLA filament. I would actually back these off a little bit. I would relieve the tension a little bit to what's that? Maybe about a quarter of an inch. And that will be most likely pretty good with the. Um, with our older generation of this uh, extruder, you can by hand turn this large gear clockwise, and it should, if you go down to the, the hot end, it should be extruding the filament, which it is. So as I turn it clockwise, it's extruding the filament. Not having to put a lot of pressure on that. It's just doing it nice and smoothly. And now I can go to the control panel of Repetier, and just like I did with the direct drive system, I can come here, I'm going to change this speed to 200, I'm going to go to extrude about 25 millimeters, and I'm going to hit extrude. Let's go, to hope, go ahead and do that. And it's extruding it. Well still need to be worked in so it'll curl up on itself that's no big deal as long as as long as you're seeing filament extruding through there I take some needle nose pliers take that off the tip and we'll be ready to go for that one next thing to talk about is height when you're going to home the 3d printer so your home on our 3d printers is going to be left front of your print bed. 
or print platform. So that will always be home. So if I hit home all in repeteer or prompter face, um, it will move the x-axis to zero location. It'll find the end stop. Once it engages that switch, then it'll move to the y-axis. It'll move forward. It'll hit the end stop, reach zero value, and then it'll move down on the z-axis. And so mainly what we're looking at fine-tune here is the z-axis. Make sure that the height is enough to where you're not going to jam the nozzle into the heat into the heated bed if it's a plus or the uh, plywood if it's a simple or a junior. So the way that we do that is I'll just go here with the simple and I will go to home all. It's finding all its end stops. Now it's moving down to the the print bed. And see right now it thinks that's home which is not correct it has about another quarter inch to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screwdriver and on the simple I have to go to the back of the printer and I have to adjust this screw because this screw is engaging that end stop or that end switch right there. So I'm going to counterclockwise lefty loosen so that the uh, the hot end can go down further before it engages this end stop. So I'll ballpark that. Instead of homing all, since I am in home on X and Y, I'll just home Z at this point. Nope, it looks like I got it right there. Looks like I guess properly. So if I hit home all or home the Z axis again, it'll lift it up and then it'll just drop it right there. That's pretty good. The next step you would want to do would be to level your print bed. Make sure that you're level across the, the X and Y um, axis. And you can do that in multiple ways, but the one I'll show you is you go to stop motor on your repeteer right here. Positive values, move it up. So I'm going to move it up one millimeter. Actually one more, so two millimeters total. Then I'm going to hit stop motor, which disengages the motors. And then just by hand, I'm going to move it around and make sure that it is relatively level. And it is. So I actually could go down a millimeter, which I do now. Stop the motors again. And just make sure that's about a millimeter height. That's looking a little higher on the back side. So we can go ahead at this point and relieve those. I'm going to do counterclockwise to loosen them so that bed comes up a little bit in the back. Or if those screws are pretty much as loose as they can get, in the back, you could screw these ones down a little bit to bring this down, which I can do that as well. Now, if I do that, if I bring the heat bed, or in this case the simple, the print bed, because it's not a heated platform, if I bring it down, I am going to need to adjust the Z height once more. Because if I go and home the Z axis, it's going to be a little higher now. So I go to the back with my screwdriver counterclockwise to loosen that so that so the hot end can go down further and touch the the print platform, which it's doing. So there we go.